Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Astrology Today and Tarot. My name is Mel Rose. This is the second half and the Tarot portion of my daily astro astrology vlog, which you can find on my other channel, Astrology Today with Mel Rose. Here I'll discuss the Tarot card that sits on the side of the page. I'll do a quick review of the day's astrology, and then I'll play another Tarot card that may give us something more to think about. So let's get into it. The tarot card that sits on the side of the page right now is the Five of Wands. And it's there because it represents the first decan or the first 10 days of the sun's transit in the land of Leo. Leo is a fire sign and wands are fire in the tarot. And fire element symbolism is about passion, drive, spark. Um, how do I want to say that? Passion, drive, spark. Yes, fire, whatever it is that that um, motivates us to want to take action uh, is is something that is about our drive and our passion. So uh, here we have the five of wands and we can see that, you know, we have five people, each with a wand of their own, and they seem to be in sort of a, a sort of a struggle with one another. Um, it's a very sort of confusing situation. It's hard to see who's really struggling with whom. Um, but what we can see is that nobody's really getting hurt in this fight, okay? This is all above the belt. Nobody seems to be sw swinging sticks directly at anybody's head or body. It's really just sort of a, let, let's say, um, a competition of wills, <laughs> okay? And and there's sort of this idea, I, I get it from the person specifically in the middle here, that's like, if I just come in here and swing my stick around, who's going to back off and let me take take charge, right? Uh, so, you know, it's really just sort of um, like everybody, it's almost like too many cooks in the kitchen. It's sort of everybody is um, um, competing for the top spot or competing for, uh, for their idea or their passion to be the one that we pursue next. Okay. So, you know, I would say in, it, it's always good when you're passionate about something to surround yourself with other people who are also passionate about that. You can learn a lot and you can grow and the camaraderie helps. Um, and also a little bit of friendly, what do I want to say? Friendly competition never help hurt anybody either. Okay. So a little friendly rivalry, um, you know, understanding like, Hey, I've got this fire, I've got this passion, you've got a similar fire and passion, let's, you know, let's uh, hash it out, let's talk about it, let's have a little argument, you know, um, stand up for your, your idea and I'll stand up for mine, right? And this way we sort of hone our skills to, to, to understand what it is that, you know, why it is that we're passionate about what we are passionate about, why it is we're driven that what to do what we're driven to do, and it helps us to get some better ideas about, you know, um, how to move forward with that. So uh, it's great to have a little struggle. It's great to have some some friendly rivalry. Um, and, you know, um, just remember that when people are coming in there hitting above the belt, you can engage in that sort of sparring action. Um, you just have to remember to be hitting above the belt as long as they are, right? So uh, don't take it to mean that somebody's, you know, um, called a full on more, you know, just because they come after you a little bit. Uh, take it as the, as the friend, the, as the friendly rivalry kind of vibe that it may be intended and, um, you know, just give as good as you get. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and shuffle some cards while I remind myself and the cards that the sun is now in Leo. So uh, first full day with the sun in Leo. We made ingress yesterday and the sun in Leo is a time, you know, well, first of all, this is going to really be the hottest part of the year, right? So uh, we kicked off cancer season with the longest day of the year. And then after the longest day of the year, we get the, we get the hottest two or three months um, here in the Northern Hemisphere. And uh, so, <laughs> you know, here we are uh, in the hottest part of the year, and Leo is ruled by the sun, and the days are pretty much ruled by the sun. Our lives are kind of ruled by the sun right now. Like, oh, how hot out is it? Can I can I get out there and do the things I want to do, or should I? You know, do I need to protect myself while I'm out there? Do I need to make sure and drink extra water, or that kind of thing? And here we are in in the height of the summer. Leo is ruled by the sun, and the sun is 
the king of everything in our lives. So, um, you know, this is a this is a matter of expression of royalty. This is it's, it sort of makes us feel a little more royal. It makes us kind of notice the ways in which we are great and grand, and it makes us want to, you know, share that that warmth and um, sort of appreciation we have for ourselves <laughs> with other people. Uh, while we also, you know, notice that other people are having the same vibe about them, and we can appreciate what 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 is special that they bring to the equation as well. So it's kind of a time to shine and to appreciate other people as they shine as well. Mercury is also in Leo and this makes us really big talkers. We want to, you know, we want, we have a really grandiose style. We want to make a, you know, a very, um, shiny plan <laughs> for, for people to follow, you know, and we want to express ourselves in sort of a flashy or dramatic way, um, that, you know, sort of, uh, demonstrates, uh, how great we feel <laughs> and, and how, how much we, we love sharing how great we are with others. Um, it's okay to feel that way from time to time. You know, it's a really good thing to notice it when you, you know, when you feel great, when you know you're really good at what you're doing, when you know you're in the game and, and do, doing what you, you know, what you've set out to do well. It's a good, it's a good thing to sort of um, shine that for others, let them see that, let them see themselves reflected in it. And, uh, you know, also just uh, setting a good example, right? Um, and then, on the moon side of the page, we have the waning gibbous moon. So this is a time of release. And the moon is in Gemini today. Gemini is very much about our thoughts, plans, and communications. It's generally a pretty kind of playful, talkative vibe. And so, you know, at this time, you know, we might be seeking to let go of, because Gemini is so intellectual, so, sort of um, thoughts, attitudes, dispositions, ways of uh, of expressing ourselves that no longer serve a purpose for us to reach our bigger goals. On the moon side of the page today, moon went, moon goes sextile to Jupiter, and then an hour later sextile to Mercury. So, uh, you know, that moon in Gemini that's feeling very talkative and like sharing from the heart, um, you know, goes sextile to Jupiter, which is always sharing from the heart, which is always just trying to give away what will make everybody um, you know, feel fulfilled and satisfied. So uh, that's a great time, a cooperative time for our hearts and our sense of expansion to be sharing um, presence with other people, especially other people that we like and love and want to keep around us. And then just an hour later, you know, the, the, we come in with this, uh, not, not a warning, a reminder that, you know, uh, light conversation works <laughs> works well among people too. So if you're hanging out and you're sharing your your benevolence and your expansion and your growth with the people around you, um, it's okay to keep the conversation light and just, you know, uh, enjoy that vibe and not worry too much about the the uh, the big conversations that need to be had. There will be a time for that coming up. On the sun side of the page today, Mercury goes trying to Jupiter almost one o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, Mercury and Jupiter get together and it's just like our thoughts, plans, and communications and our sense of growth and expansion, our desire to be educated and to go places and to do bigger business, that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, it's a good time to be uh, studying up on the things that you want to move in the direction of. It's a good time to be, um, you know, expressing your desires for an expanded existence and and ex expressing your plans as well to on how you're going to make that bigger plan happen for you so um that trine vibration there is just a blessing have your mind have your conversations and have your planning on the expanded idea that you have for yourself in the ongoing column uranus is conjunct to i mean north node is conjunct to uranus and this can this can uh, be represented as sort of like this wavering of of how we're going to get the resources we need. You know, um, this is all happening in Taurus, so it's about it's really about securing reliable uh, material resources for our comfort and stability. And you know, Uranus has been creating a wobble in the stability of our material comfort uh, for a few years now, which we can tell just. 
uh, you know, the supply chain has slowed way down and, um, you know, th things are just not as reliable as they used to be. And now the North Node comes in and North Node, you know, collectively is our short term trajectory the next, you know, year because North Node is an 18 month um, transit and it went in like back in January. So the next just about a year, you know, we're still going to have this this overall focus and trajectory toward securing those reliable resources that we need to feel comfort and so comfortable and secure and supported in our home. So, you know, we've got this conjunct with Uranus, there's a wobble, there's an uncertainty about what that's going to look like or how we're going to get what we need for, you know, for where we're trying to go. Um, and it's, it's, uh, you know, if you feel stressed out about that, it sounds pretty stressful to me too. So, uh, don't be too surprised and um, also it's okay to give yourself a break be patient with yourself and others and also another piece of guidance I was given was uh, to imagine what it felt like to be or what it feels like to put yourself in the space of what it feels like to be re well resourced to have all everything that you need okay even if you don't feel that you have everything you need, or maybe you have everything you need right now, but you feel insecure about the, the future, remember to, to continue standing in this feeling of in the present, I have everything I need. All of my needs and desires are met, okay? Sun, uh, Pluto is retrograde and Sun is in opposition to Pluto. Pluto has us going through these deep and total changes, like really fundamental and foundational. It's the last... Uh, Pluto retrograde in Capricorn that any of us will ever see. <laughs> so if you feel like you're going through some changes, uh, you're not alone. It feels very personal, but it's a it's a culture wide thing. Okay, so again, let's be kind to ourselves and others because they don't know what we're going through and on the inside, and we don't know what they're going through. And then Sun comes into opposition to Pluto and says, "Yeah, there might be some power struggles coming in. We might be like." trying to gain dominance in some field or situation. We might be uh, trying to, uh, you know, one up the next person, or perhaps we're just trying to get control of a situation that we don't feel uh, is in control. Or perhaps we're just trying to get control of ourselves at this time too, because that Pluto is retrograde. It's turning all that um, transformational power back in on the self. So, uh, you know, that's a possibility. And so, you know, when the sun is opposite to Pluto and we worry about those power struggles, you know, we have to remember the sun is in Leo. We put on our crowns and we bring our benevolent heart to all of our interactions. We're going to be very generous and kind with other people, um, you know, to, to help us get through this, this, struggle for control. And another thing I would say is to ask yourself, like, do I really need control of this thing or this situation? Okay. Uh, or do I, do, do I really need to est establish dominance in this field at this time? Um, if it's something that's coming up as a, as a struggle for power with somebody else, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta ask yourself, you gotta do the cost benefit analysis on that and say, is it worth it to have this struggle right now? Or, you know, do I, do I want to, you know, continue to, to work on my stuff and, and, um, you know, f find or seek a different way to establish my dominance without having to struggle with anybody. And then Neptune is also retrograde. Neptune is pulling the veil from our eyes. We can tell the difference between our fantasy and our reality. And that doesn't mean we can't see our fantasy. It just means that we, we know for sure that that is the dream, okay? And the dreams exist so that we have something to work, work toward, right? They are ideals that we might not ever meet, but we can get close to them if we keep in mind what the dream is and then just keep sort of working our life in that direction right sun goes trying to neptune in retrograde and this really brings out our compassion um you know not just for ourselves but for others uh, we have a really clear view a really clear vision of what it is that we might be able to do to help like say out in the community and um you know saturn is retrograde and in aquarius asking us to think about what it is that we can be doing to participate better in the community. How well have we done that so far? And, and are, you know, how, what, what can we do to uh, represent ourselves better in the future? So this is real, really good vibe for contributing 
um, in a compassionate way, you know, showing up for people in need and, uh, and, and giving and helping out in the way that, in the best way that we know how. And that trine aspect there is like a blessing that says, you know, give of yourself right now, give of yourself compassionately to your community. And you know, the blessing is going to come back to you. And then Chiron is also retro retrograde. Chiron is in Aries from 2027 to 2019. And so, uh, you know, we're right in the middle of that uh, Chiron transit that's all about our social wounds, our, our feeling of acceptance as we try to ex express ourselves and really be ourselves out in the world. So diversity and inclusion are words that come to mind there. And that we have all had experiences where we personally have felt excluded or, you know, like we did not fit in and we were, and it was made clear to us that we did not fit in, right? Uh, and so that can be a wounding experience. And now is a time to be working on healing our old social wounds. Okay. So whatever it is that we have learned about, um, you know, accepting the diversity of people and whatever it is we have learned about uh, better including people over the past year or so, uh, you know, now we want to bring that to bear on our own discussion, our internal discussions with ourselves and with spirit about the, the social wounds we experience. And I, I just have a feeling just from the way things are coming together on the page that a, a lot of this healing of social wounds um, can can be accelerated or enhanced perhaps by um, the, the opportunities to be engaged in the social and civic life, okay? So getting out there, being helpful, contributing the way we think people should contribute in community to the human collective, a lo that's going to take us a long way toward uh, feeling healed around those old social wounds. And with all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over. Five of Pentacles on the move. All right. So Pentacles are about Earth. They're about, well, Pentacles are the Earth element. And Earth element symbolism is about your physical well-being in the world, your physical resources, including your body, uh, the things you have, especially the nice things that you like to have, and, um, you know, your finances. How well is it going in your bank account or in your pocketbook, right? Uh, what kind of uh, money do you have? What are you receiving? What are you spending? How well is that going for you, right? And Five, Pen Five of Pentacles really reflects a time when people are kind of um, going without. And I said on the move because they're, they look like they're walking somewhere. And it, it's almost like they're walking past the the church, which I would normally describe as like the institution that is there to help. Five of Pentacles often is like a reminder that if you're going without something that you physically need, um, or if you're doing, or if you're going out with going with without something and that it, and that is to your phys to the detriment of your physical health, then, you know, you have to find somebody to ask. And often, you know, that's going to be a person who has a lot of resources or an institution that has a lot of resources, like say a, bl a brick building and a stained glass window, that, that institution has resources they can share. So if you're going at, going without, please find somebody that has good resources that you can ask for the help that you need. But also, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, listen, we're, we've come into this period of sort of forced austerity, or we are coming into this period of sort of forced austerity, you know, and this brings me back to the Uranus conjunct Neptune, the North Node conjunct Uranus in Taurus here, um, you know, just uncertainty about our our material resources, uncertainty about our future income or our present income, uncertainty about, you know, what it costs to get the gas and to get the groceries right now and, and how long can we carry on this way, right? So, um, you know, understand that there is still... <laughs> And there is always enough, okay? There's always enough food. There's always, there are always enough clothes. There is also always shelter that somebody can provide, okay? There is always enough of these material resources to go around. So, you know, if you, if you are not coming by them, 
they're going somewhere else and we have to be able to rely on, you know, someone bigger and better resource than us to help us, um, you know, get what we need. Uh, but also this one came with the reminder to like, remind yourself, what did it feel like when you had what you need, right? Um, and, and some of us are going without, you know, and we know that there are people we could ask and we're choosing to keep walking, <laughs> right? We're choosing not to ask those specific people. Maybe we think that the price of, um, you know, the price of taking money from the church to pay the utility bill is too high. You know, some people might feel that way and some people might just choose to go without say their air conditioning because they don't want to ask the church for money or they don't want to ask you know their uncle for money or their brother for money or their you know daughter <laughs> for money but you know honestly seriously if you are putting your health at risk please ask somebody who is well resourced to to help you out okay and also uh you know at this time, we are also sort of revising what it is that we that we consider need, right? We we have to uh, take into account that, um, you know, stuff that we actually need, like groceries, and many of us fuel for our cars um, is going to uh, is going to dominate and over any other personal things that we generally think of as needs, but you know, are going to wind up being able to go without. So we are redefining our, redefining our sense of need. We may be going without some things right now, uh, but we have to understand that the resources are there and available to us if we're going without to our detriment, okay? Um, and, you know, are you going, out beca going without because you've got this sort of power struggle going on where you're like, no, I can do this, or, <laughs> you know... Are you going without because, you know, you're mad because the, you know, the electricity company takes so much um, or, you know, the gas, uh, the, you know, it costs so much to fuel the car, it costs so much to get groceries. So you're like, fine, I don't need groceries. I'm going to plant a garden and I'm, I'm sure I'll live till then, right? No, don't plant a garden in, re in <laughs> reaction to the fact that you don't, didn't get food from the store. That's not going to work. Okay. Taken together with, oh, but I want to remember, I want to remind you also, and look at the way they're pushing in this direction. Um, Mercury is trying to Jupiter. Venus is going to go square to Jupiter tomorrow. And I know square usually comes across as challenging, but it's still an opportunity for things to go well in terms of drawing in the resources that we, that we need and desire, as long as we can not be too needy or grasping about it. So, um, you know, perhaps these people are holding out because they know that they've got something bigger planned and because they know that the, that the things they need and desire are coming to them, right? Perhaps they have this idea that all of their needs and desires are met. After all, they're out in the snow. They do have cold, they do have clothes on, they do have boots on their feet. So, you know, I mean, perhaps they're just going without a little bit at this time because they, they can see what's coming to them in the near future. Taken together with the five of wands. We have two fives, okay? So fives in tarot are generally like, uh, they, they generally indicate some sort of a struggle, right? Um, what do we have? We have five of swords, which is sort of like that, that ability you have to win all the arguments, but you might not have any friends if you do. And then the five of cups is a time when we uh, you know, reflect on a loss, um, but also have the opportunity to remember what we um, have gained or what we have maintained. And this is, you know, sort of a struggle of spirit and and enthusiasm. <laughs> and this is a, this is more of a struggle of of the health and the wealth, right? So, um, you know, perhaps. Perhaps sometimes we go without because we want to avoid being part of the fight and the fracas. You know, perhaps you do have that one family member that everybody can turn to for a little money when it's needed, you know, and you call her up and you say, Auntie, I need $200 for my electricity bill. 
but you realize that four other people have already just called her asking for money for their electricity bill. Okay, so like uh, we all have these needs, we have these drives, we have the you know these these um, these uh, uh, these desires that we have to get met, and you know in wands we are pursuing that. So we ask for what we need, and we and we plan for what's going to happen next. And, um, you know, sometimes our plans conflict with those of others, or sometimes, you know, we find ourselves in a group of people where everybody had kind of the same idea, but not really the same idea, right? So then you find yourself in a fight and a fracas, and you, you really don't want to be a part of that, and you really don't want to be, you know, as an example, a drain on your on your rich old aunt. So you decide to go without or to, to look for another way to resource that for yourselves. Um, I, I could see something like that happening for sure. Uh, it, it's funny because yesterday we had the Page of Wands and she was also facing off in the other direction, sort of like, yeah, I don't really want to be a part of this fight. I'm just going to move on. And these people seem to be saying, I'm going to move on, even if it means I'm going to go without. I'm just going to find another way to take care of myself. Um, you know, the five is a time when we go through a struggle, uh, but the struggle is like the challenge, the, the square challenge in astrology. It is not meant to stop us. It is not really meant, it might slow us down, but it's really meant to uh, help us remember what we are resolved to do and, and to push us into action, um, you know, to get past this sort of stalemate kind of energy. And I believe that's all I have to say about it today, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate your presence here. My name is Mel Rose, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow for more Astrology Today and Tarot.